TNGM The Show presents... Talking Nerdy, March 2024. We're going to be covering, today we're going to be covering Dune 2 Part 2. These two saw it more in-depth, right? You did a spoiler for your review. You guys are going to go in-depth, and I'm going to get all the spoilers. I'm going to, I'm going to be the one, you know, interviewing, so to speak. Maybe. We'll see. With your hosts, Pablo Gunner. The Ambassador. And our guest. Special guest. Oh, Marvin Goof here. Marvin Goof, yes, who did a Dune 2. He did our Dune 2 review. Dune Part 2 review, to be more specific. And so we are here to talk nerdy to you. We've been doing this, what, like almost 13 years now? Yeah. Right? Crazy. So we are here to waste our time so you don't have to, right? Like, we're going to watch everything, good or bad, that's nerdy. You know, try to play as many things, do as many things, so you don't waste your time. You can save it for the best of the best, Absolutely, right? Yeah. So that's what we're here to deliver on. Let's get into it. Doing part two. I want to hear about it. <sighs> oh, so uh, if you're not familiar with Dune, the first two movies are one book. So that's why when you go in, it feels like starting where the other one left off. Because basically, that's what it does. There might be just a little bit of time ahead, but not even, not much. Indeed, that was, like, to me, that was the surprise that they started it so right afterwards. I was actually really excited about it. And it's yeah. like, oh, and you actually see everything evolve and what it can Yeah, like, you, you, you can tell Paul was with them for a little bit longer than in the movie, but not much, because you're still at the point where he is needing to become a tribe member. Mm -hmm. Then you learn about the northern and southern tribes and how they're very different from each other. Yeah, and in that case, like, that, that was another thing. I mean, I've, I read the book. I forgot you read the book. You know, I haven't read you? it. Okay, because that's actually a difference that's not in the book. All of the Fremen there actually were all 100% behind him. There wasn't this difference between the north and south. So I thought, as a person who read the book, that was a really interesting sort of ad. And the dichotomy of just having the mother go to the south, trying to sow the legend that, that, we're, that everyone was just kind of buying into, like Stilgar, like uh, uh, Javier Bardem's character, very fundamentalist, religious believer, he's from the south. So yeah. trying to sew all that was really interesting. Mm. But Stilgar, oh my gosh, what what a character! Like he, he was, he was one you didn't really, you didn't know him last movie, but this movie, you start getting more and more of an idea of who he is. Mm -hmm. At first, he seems to have some doubts, but he, hoping that is true. But I think about halfway through, he just like puts his full support into. For Paul, indeed, he's he starts to see the signs and he buys into it, um, and I mean that's the whole really interesting thing about the Dune universe is the the sort of idea of prophecy and messiahs and how some people just shouldn't have that amount of power, <laughs> and that's kind of the whole thing, uh, and so yeah, I was just so happy with how things turned out just because of they got the tone right like it was serious enough but also uh the character like depth of character with everyone was really well expressed i feel like i mean would you agree yeah i would agree and uh no zendaya wasn't in there as much as uh i thought she was gonna be mm. which is more of a relief than anything else <laughs> but they had enough of her where it was really effective and they really built her character well and then they also used her for a little bit of comic relief at some moments as well mm -hmm. but when i got to like battle she was pretty awesome indeed exactly like that, that was something that did surprise me about her performance as well i think she's showing a lot of potential for something like that and i mean as a person who read the book it's another thing that's really interesting is the way that chani was done is also different from the book. Like, she was always 100% behind Paul being the like, Muad'Dib and the whole mystique of him, right? But they're showing, uh, at the end of this movie, she's sort of at odds with him. 
and doesn't really like the way that he's approaching anything. So it's it's opening up this, again, interesting sort of uh, way to take the movies to the next sort of, how can I say it, like the next sort of nuance, I'd say. Because Paul, by the time this movie is over, he is a tyrant. Like, 100%, he is not a good guy. And she... As opposed to the book, she's turning around and saying, you're, you're basically not who I thought you were. And she's, you know, who knows, it could turn into her being, like, leading a rebel sect or something like that. That's kind of what I'm looking forward to, is maybe her opposing Paul in some level in the next, in the next movie, so. Yeah, because basically, towards the end, basically, Paul realizes that if he doesn't take on the mantle of Messiah, it's just not going to work. And they're going to just be back to square one mm -hmm. before you know it. But the problem with taking on the mantle is, and playing the game of politics is, you become what you hate. Exactly. So it's almost like, at least I feel for people who are fans of Breaking Bad, I feel like this movie has this really interesting idea of this really well-intended good character that through force of choice, has to turn to something that he never thought he would actually end up doing. He opposed the whole idea, because, I mean, it was manufactured, too. You know, this wasn't real religion or anything, at least how we would think of it, you know. It was his mother's organization planting a story, and he didn't want to buy into it. He was opposed to it. And now... Wow. You know, they, they knew the story, but his mother's organization didn't want it to happen. Yeah, not basically, quite then, yeah. <laughs> because basically it's talking about that organization being overthrown, mm -hmm. which is kind of the organization that runs the galaxy, and uh, they, they're they always behind the scenes with all the leaders and influence them. You could say it's kind of like the Portuguese in Shogun. <laughs> Well, first let me thank you for answering the ad. Now, what do you feel qualifies you to be an effective babysitter for Stewie? A gente é ótima com os meninos. Uh, yeah. Uh, we couldn't run an ad that said no Portuguese, but, um, no Portuguese. Huh, okay. okay. The Portuguese are gradually, like, changing people so that they can just do a full takeover of Japan. Mm. But, uh, obviously, things get in the way, and just how in Dune things got in the way as well. Indeed. And, of course, it's the action movie, like, yeah. reading the book, and it's always so interesting, because the way the book presents itself, a lot of stuff is done almost in past tense. Like, Florence Pugh's character actually has usually a paragraph at the beginning of every chapter, and, she, you know, that character's trying to allude to what's about to happen. And, uh, <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah. I had a good time watching that movie. It was so good. Oh, gosh, so many good effects, so many good characters. I, like I said, I said in my review, Austin Butler, I think, was the best performance of the whole thing. Because, I mean, he plays a complete psychopath so well. <laughs> I was so surprised, and I'm like, yep, that, that's... That's Bade Rafa. He did yeah. it. He did it really well. Uh, so yeah. Yeah, I, I think I thought that was crazy to see them trying to manipulate him. <laughs> Am I interrupting? Not at all. Fred, I'd like you to meet your new secretary, Miss Sharon Stone. My secretary? Personal secretary, Mr. Flintstone. That is, of course, if you want me. <laughs> It kind of works, but at the same time, like, I don't think it's working as well as you think it would. Exactly, yeah. He's, he's the kind of character that would love, because there's this whole, like, put your hand in the box situation, if you saw the first movie. Mm -hmm. You know, they put Fade through that to test him. He's the kind of guy that likes that. So, <laughs> it's, it's he doesn't really, you know, how can I say? It's, it's more keyed into his disposition. Like that's how I will say. So he wasn't really manipulated in that way. He's he's just doing what he loved in that case. He's just like, well, I know what you're doing, but I'm going with it because our interests align. Pretty much, yeah. 
and he gets another chance to cut someone. That's that's how he sees it. And that final fight, the sandworms, and oh gosh, so many things. Also good. Uh, yeah, that's it's the thing I looked forward to after seeing the first movie. So, <laughs> do you, do you like the eighties Dune or this one better? Oh, I'll see, I haven't yet to see the eighties one. Uh, at least not all the way through. And there's, you know, again, there's differences. Because, you know, there's this whole concept of Paul's sister, as well, as kind of a big deal, too, in the book, right? They treated her differently as well. Like they, the fact that she was not even born by the end is different from the novel, and even different from the first book, uh, first movie. So, it, it's it's interesting. I feel like both have their merits, really. You know, so this one, I feel like it really comes from the grandeur and the vision that, you know, the director brings to it and the kind of presentation. So, yeah. Yeah, if you if you want to have an idea of how the 80s one turned out, if you ever watched the show Twin Peaks? The See, guy who yeah. the guy who directed Twin Peaks is the guy who did the original Dune movie. So that, oh, okay. I, for, I didn't realize that. <laughs> <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> you learned something new. But yeah, I think the, I think the newer movie was uh, better from the beginning because they knew they were allowed to do what needed to be done. Well, unfortunately, with Dennis Finch, he wasn't allowed to do what he needed to do. There was, he, yeah. He was basically told, well, you need to make this into... A full movie and really that much content doesn't work as a full movie it needs to be a mini series or like a part two-part movie Indeed. sometimes you just need to split things up yeah and yeah I would say between at least the three presentations that I know of I'd say like the newer Denis Villeneuve movies are the best ones the sci-fi series that they did uh, I think it was back in the early 2000s is actually pretty good uh, and the other movie, I'd say, is third place. But, yeah, who knows? You get something different from everything. So, at least that's how I see it. Yeah, I, I give it a must-watch. Yes. In theaters. Oh, absolutely, yes. Oh, IMAX see, if you can. See it in IMAX. What are you doing? Go see it in IMAX. <laughs> so, are you, are you going to buy it when it comes out? First day, I hope. So, exactly. like a physical copy or a digital? Absolutely physical copy. Or you're just going to stream it? I'll do both the physical and digital, because usually the they physical come with, comes yeah. with the digital. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. So I now I actually like the '80s movie a lot. Like it's, but I I love that style, right? Like I I totally love that movie. I have not read the books, and I've heard like the, there's the comparisons, obviously, of Dune and Star Wars, and that Dar Star Wars is actually very strongly influenced by Dune. Um, mm -hmm. That that George Lucas got a lot of his uh, inspiration from Dune and Doctor so, Who, yeah, amongst other things. But so I and I watched the first movie. I won't say I wasn't impressed, but I was, I was just like, uh, I was bored. I was really bored. And I know that that movie really was just mostly setting up. But to me, like that's not. I'm not going to see a movie to see setup for the next movie, right? Like even when it comes to like the. To the Marvel movies. When they were all setting up the characters, I wasn't there to watch Avengers get set up. I was just there for those heroes. Mm. And then it led up to Avengers. And then, you know, and then of course led up to these bigger things, right? Yeah. Turn I'm also wondering, like, is this going to be the next Marvel Universe? Like, is it going to be that big? Because I would be okay with that if going in from, from the get-go, right? Like, yeah. when I went into the MCU, I was like, oh, this is intended to be a long-game thing. Now, if this is going to be a long-game thing, okay, fine, then I'll sit through a, a boring movie, you know, for all the exposition, whatever. To me, I've always thought, and that's why I love the Marvel shows, is because they're episodic, right? Like, comics mm -hmm. are episodic. Uh, books are episodic because they go by chapters. Yes. So why wouldn't you do a show? Okay, I get it. You're not going to get the same budget. But hypothetically speaking, if they were to have the same budget, would you rather see this as a show? If they had the same budget, see, that would be interesting. Um, like if it was everything was the same quality. Hmm. You know, 
I think it would have its merits then, and that's what's really interesting. I think the way that they edit this out, like, especially when it comes to his sister, like, by the end of the book, she's born, and she's a fully talking two-year-old girl <laughs> that is, like, fully aware of herself. It's one of the weird things, right? Like, I think she was, I think it was in the older movie where they basically presented it as best they could. Um... So I think it would allow for something like that for to show a much longer growth in that case as far as Paul's character. Like, he would feel like he was among the Fremen for much longer. And I think there'd be an advantage in that, yes. With the way it's edited and presented in this, I, you know, I think it gets the point across. So, plus you get the... Um, the idea that you could see the story self-contained in a few, like one or two sittings, even though the movies are like two hours long. Okay. But, you know, I, I think, yeah, it kind of depends on the person, I, I guess I'd say. If you, I think I'd enjoy both. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a question. Do you, do you have to watch the first movie to watch the second one? I would say it's better to. I think you probably would need to. Mm -hmm. But it's been a while since it came out, so do you, would do you feel like people should watch it, watch the first one before, because I don't like the idea of going like, okay, if I'm going to go see this movie, I have to re-watch the first one to get this one or to so that it enriches it when it should be fine on its own. Just watching, just having watched the first one's good enough. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go and re-watch the first one mm -hmm. to but, see the second one. Yeah. I mean, there's some things you definitely, if you didn't see the first one, you would basically not know. Like, there's the term Quiza Tatarak, what does that mean? Um, and, you know, what the organizations are, what some of the powers that Paul and his mother use, stuff like that. But, I mean, I would say if you didn't see the first movie, just go into it understanding that it's this evolution of a character. I think that's the biggest thing to take away from it, is that you're going to watch a character change, and they're going to be completely different by the time that movie's over. And I think people would enjoy it on that level. So, I I was not that really that interested based off my experience with the first, but hearing you guys talk about it, and other hearing other things about it on social media have gotten me interested. Now, I'm still not going to see it because I have three kids and it's nearly impossible for me to, to manage that, so... That's not going to happen. But I will definitely, most definitely watch it once it comes out stream. Because before I was like, ah, maybe. But now I'm like, okay, I definitely got to check this out. So I've also heard like really interesting things like the villains are like pure white, right? <laughs> and then it seems like oppressed people are brown, you know? And so it's a very, like they're, I mean, when I say white, like they are alabaster like they are pure you know i mean sort of there's mm -hmm. like they're 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 bleach their skin looks bleach white right <laughs> that's just one race from uh one world but i'm just saying like they are the villains right yeah that's what well it's they're it's, it, it's they're hard. part of the villains because there's there's it's not good and evil mm -hmm. they're it's, just different factions yeah it's a different faction so, but yeah the effects like because it's with their planet like they make them at least when they're on that planet right because i think it was get the jetty Pro, the getty prime scenes um where they had this really interesting like monochromatic presentation that was that kind of actually made me really happy watching it it made it look good so yeah in a way they they pres you know you could interpret it that way, but that's not. It's only when they're on that planet that they look pure bleach. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, I've. I mean, even seeing the first one, like it, they look like phenomenal movies. Like you can't deny that they're phenomenally made movies. Yeah. And stuff. So, all right, cool. So, must see, must buy from the both of you. Yeah. Right. Yes. Cool. So that's that. And that being said, like I said, we talked about some of our merch already of the stuff we're going to be making for you all for next month. I'm sporting our Dragon Ball style shirt talking nerdy to me because, of course, um, if you've heard Akira Toriyama passed away, which is such an, uh, such an icon, such a legend, is, of course, Dragon Ball, but... He also did, like, Chrono Trigger, and then he did Dragon Quest games. Yes, yeah, so he, he's just like, it's so crazy when people go, all he did 
was put pen to paper and how much, right, like drawing and writing and how much people did he affect. There is a generation of nerds because there's nerds used to be basement dwellers, you know, attic dwellers maybe. Now look what they are. They're the gun show, right? Like, yes. the, and, and I'm not even one of the big ones. Like, there's dudes that legitimately look like Broly mm -hmm. because of Dragon Ball Z. There's dudes that look like Goku. Like, there's a generation, and then, like, even like you said, the other stuff, like, that he's done, it's just crazy how he's changed, you know, how, how I, he's changed, obviously, even uh, America, the America's Western civilization, because I know that Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z is massive in South America even, right? Because yep. they came, they were there before they, they were in, in the States. So, like, they're, they're huge. It's huge everywhere. And it's so crazy, the influence of the guy just made drawings and, and wrote some stuff. And that's it. And it's beautiful, beautiful. Indeed. So, if you want to do it, do it. Be inspired by that. And make, let's create, let's make those stories, right? Absolutely. And inspire yes. people to work out, to do more, to grow, to be better. So, yeah. And then I also got uh, my Azul Beetle pants that I designed. I don't even know if I have these in the store, but I just loved the Blue Beetle movie so much. It spoke to me. I know it didn't speak to everybody. It wasn't really necessarily meant to speak to everybody. I mean, hopefully it, it does to us and then to a certain degree, but I, I thought it was phenomenal. I think it was one of the best things, if not the best thing, that DC's put out in a long time. So, especially if you're not, like, into superhero stuff, I, I think, like, you won't notice a lot of the things, I won't say ripped off, but definitely, you know, we're taking notes from, like, Iron Man, and, and mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much, right? There's so much now. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, what about you guys? Well, I, I mean, that pretty, pretty much sums it up for me. There's a lot of good stuff coming out, you know, so... But you got the Halo. Out. I did get the Halo shirt right here, so, you know... And we're going to have to hook, we're gonna have to hook him up with the Star Trek, oh, you know? Oh, yes, absolutely. We'll, we'll get that Star Trek merch yeah. out there. We don't have much now, but like I said, we'll start pumping it out. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, so for sure. We'll, I don't we'll know, they might just all forget about Star Trek, like how everyone conveniently forgot about Michael and Discovery. <laughs> <laughs> that was the dumbest thing oh, I've no. ever seen in my life. <laughs> it, basically, Michael Burnham, the main character, when they go into the future, they're like, okay, well, we're all going to forget about this character. Just all interesting <laughs> that was really, things. like, literally what they said. It was bad. Oh, man. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. I love uh, I, I love the main chick though. Oh my gosh, she was also wasn't she also in Walking Dead? Maybe. Yeah, she Maybe. was in Walking Dead. Um, but I mean, I, I love the first season. I absolutely love the first season of Star Trek uh, Discovery. So, and I know there's other stuff that's been really good. I've heard of Star Trek that's that's out there. What's what's the other one that they have besides Discovery? Uh, I know uh, there's Picard, obviously, which I've yes. heard both good and bad things. Uh, but Beyond mostly has been good. pretty Brave solid. Beyond, yes, Beyond. Brave is New the World other one. is out there, but Brave New Worlds is out there somewhere too. I think. Uh, I think. No, yeah. Not um, beyond um, Stranger Worlds. Stranger Worlds. That's yeah, the one that's I've one. heard a lot of good things about. That one's been kind of good. Even that's Lower Decks. Basically, uh, happens before uh, Kirk takes over the Enterprise, and so it's. Uh, Focused on Pike's uh, turn as captain. Okay, sweet. So, and then you're rocking the uh, talk nerdy to me Star Wars shirt. Yes, and and this is like our so this is like our first one of our first shirts, right? Like our stuff's gotten way better. Like we've added like light swords. Are we? You know, <laughs> beam swords. Beam swords. You know, <laughs> but yeah, like there's some legit stuff. Like we have like. You know, the double one, the, 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 the white ones. Like, we have so many different designs that Slay J designed that are just phenomenal. And I, and I feel like I need to get those ones because they're so great. Yes. But, yeah, there's there's so much stuff. So And what's great, too, is so every month we donate 5% of our profit to charity. So help us help them by buying our merch. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for March, it's uh, Center for Reproductive Rights. Um, last month it was Noble. I forget. I know that for April we're going to do Autism Speaks. Mm. So I've done my research. That's what we're going to cover. That's going to be charity that we're going to be donating to. So please help us so that we can give, get, help them out, right? We want to, we want to make a positive influence on our society, 
on our world. Absolutely, you know? yes. And that being said, I want to give shout outs because the, the people that have po uh, positively helped us as well. Of course, at the top of that list and always at the top of that list, we have to give out a shout out to our best bud Atticus who just continues to grow and get better and do more interesting things on his YouTube channel mm -hmm. as a YouTuber in Vietnam, as a teacher in Vietnam, and just showing us, you know, slice of life, you know, anything, any really anything goes. Like, I mean, now he's covering, he's he did, he's done a deep dive of, of Dune on his, so he, he has nerdy stuff too. Like, we've inspired him to, to do some nerdy stuff on his channel so definitely check him out he's one of the greatest uh we have burn attention this the superpower list check them out on facebook and definitely on x we also added uh there's gone gold podcast po boy pod billy d's gmart 8 pesky gremlins they retweet us a lot so they're awesome cinematic anarchy filmmaker pod uh, mk jekyll and hyde they're uh they're across the board they do uh, on oh, online web comics and stuff, nice, and and I just yeah. love I just love the message that they send. Like they're everything that they say is so inspirational. Mm -hmm. So definitely check them out. The Film Rage guys, those guys, they they review every single movie, good or bad, kind of like us. Mm -hmm. They waste their time, mm -hmm. so you don't mm -hmm. have to. Mm -hmm. it's, and some stuff is surprising. You'll be surprised. Like some stuff, you're like, oh, I thought that was going to be garbage. They give just enough to where it doesn't feel like completely spoiled, but they'll spoil if they're like, we're going to spoil so that you don't waste your time because you shouldn't. Like we have to spoil it so that you, you know, do that. So they're great. Web Imagine Service, they do music and promote music. Amerime Media, they, they're similar to us, but they're different. Uh, and Riot TV, they do uh, streaming stuff, which is hilarious. Uh, Zarin67. And then newly added is G Nuts of Horror. So if you're into horror, definitely check them out because they do reviews for stuff for them. So that's where you're going to do your get your horror stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, share us, you know, with your friends, your family, your dogs, you know, your pets, whatever. Let's talk. Let's keep talking about this stuff. You yeah, know, get, get, uh, yes. Yeah, we're trying to get to 500 subscribers. We're more than halfway there so that we can cover more stuff for you and and like i said like us on on facebook and and help us out you know we really appreciate it we love it thank you for getting uh where we where you've gotten us to now on 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 everything we're we're, we're on everything we're on x we're on the threads we're on instagram we're on facebook we're on youtube of course so talk nerdy to me stay nerdy planet earth stay